Okay, well you're about to start your thesis. So this short presentation is going to explain to you the process of how you're going to, to carry out this task. Now it's most important that you follow it in the order prescribed, otherwise there will be setbacks which will be very frustrating for you, not to mention leading to some quite extensive time delays and additional work. The process has been carefully designed to take you through all the stages and the steps of producing your thesis in the quickest time possible with the fewest delays. So I hope this short presentation will get across some of what we're trying to do with this process. So the process has been divided into three modules. The first module is a reflective writing module and will be about 5,000 words. Now this presentation is going to look at the reflective writing module first and then later on we will discuss understanding research and critical appraisal module and nearer the time we will then discuss how both of these fit in to deliver your dissertation module of around 10,000 words. The first two modules will actually do a lot of the work for the dissertation. So this does not mean that necessarily you will end up writing 20,000 words plus. Okay, so the first part towards your thesis. Well, the first step is the most important. If you get it wrong and go off in the wrong direction, you're going to end up taking a lot more time and be a lot more disappointed and frustrated by the whole process than needs be. Also, I don't think you'll really benefit from it either. And the whole point of this thesis is not only do you get academic recognition for your abilities as a clinician, but that you also gain something from it as well clinically because it is an MSc clin. So stop and think very carefully and this is reflection and there will be a separate presentation on how to do reflection and reflective writing uh, following this one so stop and think so following this presentation today stop and think what it is that really interests you in your practice then you can then start writing your module your first module which will be your reflective module. Now when it comes to the reflective module you have two choices. You can do a reflective clinical practice or a reflective professional log. Both of these sound very similar but the material is a little bit different. So how are they similar? Well both modules develop your reflective writing skills essential for your dissertation and help you identify your research topic. Now, if you're like me, we never did any essay writing as an undergraduate. It was mainly examinations and practical skills tests. When you're writing a thesis, you have to develop your academic writing skills. And for most dentists, this isn't something we were used to at an undergraduate level. So this module is very important in developing those reflective writing skills which many of us find quite difficult. The next place where they're both very similar is they enhance your relationship between what you actually do in practice and the theoretical research and literature that supports those clinical protocols or those procedures or maybe those technologies that you use. Where is the literature where is the evidence base to actually support what you're doing? Again, most dental practitioners tend to buy into technologies that don't really research the evidence behind them. For a thesis, you have to be able to show references to support what you're saying. You need evidence. So where do they differ? Well, they differ on the source material that you're going to be using to reflect on. In the reflective clinical practice log, you may be looking at cases, parts of cases, completed cases, or even failed cases. It's not a competency. Nobody's going to be saying this is a wonderful veneers case or this is a terrible implant case. What we want you to do is reflect on the outcome, 
reflect on what you intended to do in these cases and show through this reflection how you are formulating your question that you're going to be asking in the dissertation which is the final module of your thesis so this is most important if you're going to take this route that you have sufficient clinical material uh, that you can reflect upon doesn't necessarily need to be your own clinical material could be uh, a clinical material from several clinics but if you're going to reflect on other people's clinical material uh, there could be issues around plagiarism or patient confidentiality so bear that in mind if this is the approach you intend to take now the reflective professional log here you're reflecting on previous professional teaching and training experiences you may have done many cases in the past or attended many courses in the past or have a practice that is solely focused on one area of dentistry but may not have much actual case reports or case material to reflect on so in this case you will be reflecting on how you've developed your practice um, it may be um, that you bought a new piece of equipment such as a digital printer or a milling machine or a scanner and you may be reflecting on the process of what made you choose this scanner why you thought it was good why you thought it was needed uh, will it benefit the patients has it turned out to deliver what you thought it would deliver have you been surprised or disappointed in any way these are all issues that you would look at in your reflective professional log and again you'll be focusing on how it's affected your professional development and again at the end of this process we would hope that you would bring out a thesis question so the aims of both modules are pretty similar they're to develop your reflective powers as a dentist so that includes critical thinking problem solving and how this can be brought together to give you predictable outcomes for your patient it may be in terms of prosthetics, it may be in terms of orthodontic results. Improve your clinical judgment and expertise. This obviously is a personal um, judgment and it's about your own competency. Uh, these modules do not assess competency. Uh, this will have been tested, I'm sure, many times in many other courses at diploma level. We're not working at diploma level, we're working at an academic level, which is thesis level. A diploma teaches a craft or skill. At this level, we assume that you already have these skills, we're not reteaching. Uh, it's to promote an evidence based approach to clinical practice. Uh, a lot of dental practitioners take things pretty much on face value, and uh, this sometimes may be beneficial to patients. And I'm sure there are other times when you've taken things on face value and it hasn't quite worked out as you've thought and it's your patient that sometimes bears the end result of your uh, lack of evidence approach to practice. So that's not a criticism. Uh, again, uh, evidence-based practice was not a part, a significant part of many of our undergraduate trainings. Um, Finally, we have to examine and question your, your own assumptions, clinical outcomes and protocols. So sometimes uh, I'm an implantologist, I may hear at a conference, oh, I only use this implant system, blah, 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 because it's the best. And that's a very broad statement, but where's the evidence for it? Oh, I always drill, or maybe if you're an orthodontist, I all think this bracket's the best thing ever to hit the market, all the other brackets are very poor in comparison. Well, you need to be able to have evidence for that. You need to question, is it really that? Or maybe I haven't got experience of the other systems. So when we make bold statements, we must be prepared always to have evidence to support them. Now, what's the objective at the end of all this? Well, obviously you have advanced knowledge and skills in the topic that you're doing at your MSc. So we as examiners, as assessors, you need to demonstrate to us uh, that you have this knowledge and skills and ability at a specialist level. So this first reflective log will help demonstrate that you have this 
expertise in this professional in this particular field of interest for you next discuss how competencies have been acquired through experience training in, and are improving your patient outcomes so we want to see not only that you have advanced knowledge in a particular speciality but you have also advanced competencies now again i must stress we're not testing competencies but we need you to be able to demonstrate confidently that you have certain competencies in the field that you purport to have a special interest in and then the final objective is to identify a dissertation topic now this is very very important because it must be a topic that is of interest to you so how does the assessment work in uh, these two uh, modules that you have to choose between well let's look at the clinical reflective practice first of all you have your critical writing assignment which is 3000 words and then you have case report section Now this can be 2000 words um, it is a reflection on uh, maybe a technique or technology that you're using it might present parts of cases or fully completed cases as I've mentioned before it can even have a failed case However, if it has a failed case, you have to say what you've learned from it, why it failed, what, what happened in the first place that led to the failure, because nobody actually starts to treat a patient with a failure as a goal, but sometimes it occurs. So we have to learn from that failure and how we're going to rectify it and analyze it. And that sort of thing is very uh, a useful example in reflective writing so bear in mind it's not a technique driven case report i prepared an osteotomy site i inserted a stramen implant or i got my invisalign scanner and i did a b c d as a menu uh, th this is not what we want to see we want to just have a, a very short overview and 2000 words is not not um, a vast amount of words to be able to do this uh, people look at 5,000 words and at the beginning they might feel that that's a lot of words but in actual fact uh, when many people start writing the problem is to actually get them to keep it under 5,000 words and not develop it into 50,000 words so we move on to our reflective professional log again there's a reflective assignment slightly more words in this because of course you have to demonstrate your competency via your writing because you're not relying on case reports to show what you've done so we're allowing you more uh, opportunity to explain that now the portfolio of professional practice is about 15,000 words and this section supports your relationship between how you say you've developed professionally and what your experiences have been you have evidence there it may be courses that you've attended it may be information on technology uh, it can be all sorts of things the material you choose to reflect upon is your choice but it must be relevant to the dissertation that you're doing so if you happen to have a hobby of cooking then a lot of cookbooks and references to cookbooks as interesting as it may be would not support your reflective professional log so whatever area that you're interested in you need to put documentation in there that you can reflect upon and this this uh, identification and uh, assembly of the documentation can take a little bit of time and a little bit of thought but it has to be of good quality because you can't have reflective thinking on something that's of poor quality so the better the quality of the uh, portfolio of professional practice the, the, the better your reflective and the easier your reflective assignment will be so my advice here would perhaps be to start with either your case report or your portfolio just to assemble your information and then start to think how this experience 
um, through your critical writing is going to work towards your um, dissertation topic. Right, on completion of the first step. So when you've done these um, uh, modules, whichever one you've chosen, on this completion, you will have identified a relevant, viable, achievable dissertation topic that interests you together with a working dissertation title because your thesis has to have a title. And you have to identify a topic which is answerable and feasible. Um, sometimes uh, people become very ambitious and, and pick a very big title with a lot of scope. And when they start to investigate it, they realize that it's a, a lifelong ambition and that it's no way that they could possibly do it. And then maybe six months of work has to be thrown out and start again on a new identified topic. So we don't want any of that. We want to be absolutely sure from the start that it is a feasible topic. It is a topic that can be covered adequately within a year um, and isn't one which has such a broad scope and so many facets to it that, as I say, it's more a doctorate type of thing. So the next thing you will get from this procedure is you will have done some of the groundwork for your dissertation, the introduction, and you will have developed some of the discussion points. So this is very important because it's the first step towards writing your dissertation. So if you get this right, this all slots into your dissertation later on. And also, later in these modules, you will start to find references. Now, these references won't just support this module, but these references will also slot into your dissertation later on, because you can use the same references again, especially if they're very good references. So again, this module starts you assembling your introduction and parts of your discussion and possibly even parts of your methodology for your dissertation will be covered in this. So you'll be doing a lot of groundwork. And hopefully at the end of this process, when you've written your dissertation, uh, it will be of such quality that we will be looking to have it published in a peer reviewed um, journal. Um, your work will then be go out into the public domain, into the profession, and perhaps aid the advancement of your specialist uh, topic. So I've presented here a map that I would like you to follow so that we reach all the right points, we don't miss out any destinations, and so that we hit our route where we need to be. Good luck and I hope you enjoy this first module.